pepper on top again. It's that that enthusiasm uh, is something that I still really hope <coughs> that lots of you have for what you do. It's something that I still get out of doing this job at the DCC. I'm grateful to the staff and to all of you that still give me that. It's nice to still get excited, despite the fact that you have to produce reports and fill out spreadsheets, and there are dull things to do. It's nice to still feel there's a lot in your job to get excited uh, uh, about. Tony began by giving us this really great overview, uh, I think, of what the problem was, what we thought it was all those years ago, and how our view of the problem has changed, as well as our ability uh, to deal with it, as well as giving us some view, looking forward as to what still could be done and what still needs to be done. And, and finally, Helen, they're really both demonstrating that uh, you know, all those worries we have about are we talking about collecting data or are we talking about collecting documents, a lot of the time it really doesn't matter. These things are all just different ways of looking at the same content. And in particular, once you have enough of it, lots of those boundaries really go away and, 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 and the techniques we need to apply to them and the research questions that we might want to ask are, 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 are all can all be dealt with in those single uh, collections. Really thinking that, that there's issues there where you really do have to coordinate <coughs> on a global scale to be able to create coherent collections of information on which we can carry out research. I think that, you know, there's a few better examples uh, than, than the what's been going with web archiving of where global collaboration has emerged very quickly, highly imperfect collaboration. It's also a really good demonstration that even imperfect collaboration and imperfect and incomplete collections are better than no collaboration and no collections. There's still lots of useful stuff we can do. And finally, I'd really like to, to, to thank you for taking seriously that theme, not just of, of looking at where we've been and where we got to, but really taking that difficult challenge of thinking, where might we be in 10 years' time? What will we have dealt with and what challenges will still remain? But it wasn't just the keynotes. I mean, it's impossible. I wish I could have got to all of the sessions to, to hear about education and training and persistent IDs and data literacy and workflows and infrastructure at institutional level, at national level, at international level, at institutional case studies, at models for support, about issues around certification and data catalogues and lots and lots and lots more. Uh, and in one session at least, a mention of uh, the curation lifestyle. Uh, <laughs> uh, some of you uh, who were at one of the earlier DCC conferences in Edinburgh may have what is now a collector's item. Uh, the first edition, indeed, of the DCC life cycle managed to get to the printers uh, with a typo that we hadn't picked up, and in fact we did publish a curation lifestyle model. <laughs> Hang on to those, they're going to be valuable items uh, in, in, in the future. But I mentioned uh, when I, in my opening remarks uh, on the first day that a lot about, about this is not just about the tools that we hear, it's also about the connections uh, that we can make. I hope you've both renewed old connections and, and met new people. I've met lots of people here from countries uh, that I've not dealt with before. I've just mentioned from Finland, from Singapore, from Saudi Arabia, from South Africa and Norway, all suggesting that perhaps we might have something to collaborate about. And even if only half of those conversations turn into something that will really have been valuable to us. And I've heard already <coughs> other people who, who have already got together to, to put together separate initiatives and are doing something in a joined up way. <coughs> if every one of our conferences results in stuff like that, that again is, is, is value uh, that I hope we can give to you. And I think it's one of the reasons uh, for, us, for us doing this. This remark on the variety, for instance, of the posters, and if you know, it wasn't, we didn't design this, but I'm really glad we've had winners from three continents. For the poster competition this year. I hope we can add a few more continents to that uh, in, in the years to come. Let's see how much we can extend it and, and really take on the fact that this research challenge and curation challenge we're dealing with uh, is, is, is a global one. So I need to move on then to, to, to some thanks. Somebody mentioned in one of the, the sessions I was at this afternoon saying, ended their talk by saying they gave their thanks to the organisers for signing such great venues. Uh, and you know, I can't claim the credit for that, but, but that's certainly uh, true. But, but they also observed that there's something, somebody else observed there's been something missing from this year's conference. I don't know if you can pick up what that is. We haven't had any complaints about the Wi Fi, <laughs> and we haven't had any complaints about people's batteries running out. And that's also something to do with the venue. So 
our particular advice, I think it's, it's, it's uh, Natasha uh, and Bridget in the DCC team who do that work of, of, of sorting the venues. But they're backed up by lots and lots of other people uh, that uh, I need to give thanks to. There's our sponsors, uh, Floss, um, uh, High Assist, uh, and uh, Ex Libris, uh, that we've mentioned already, and again, we really value not just the fact that they give us money, though money is important, but they also engage with a the conference. They contribute something intellectually as well, and that, that's really valuable to us. There's all the people who put in the effort on reviewing that, that made sure that you had a, a good program, the program committee uh, that helped you make what are sometimes difficult uh, decisions about how we put the conference together. There's the session chairs, there's the authors. Uh, there's the venue staff and the caterers. Uh, we've been, they've been really, really good to us this year. We haven't had any problems. I hope you feel the same about what uh, they, they've done. There's the DCC staff, all of the team. I feel really lucky. I've been really lucky for so many years to have such great people working for me. And it's all of them together who make uh, an event uh, like this work. There's all of you who make the conference what it is. And there's the funders who had the foresight to set this thing up. Uh, at the beginning, again, where many people weren't quite sure what, what the issue was, and it's because of the foresight of some of those people like Tony and others that are, are, are just, uh, that this event uh, is happening. And there are also some people I'm not going to name, they know who they are, who helped me out with some rather difficult issues at the last minute of this, and I, I'm, I'm really, really grateful to the people uh, who, who, who stepped in uh, to, to do that. So, okay, I'm going on about in many ways how great it was and how great, uh, how much I appreciate all the, the help that we get, but just because it was good for me doesn't necessarily mean uh, it was good for you. Uh, we do, we are interested in what you think. Uh, hopefully all of you have handed one of these forms on the way in for you to give us some feedback. We do want to hear about that. If you don't want to do it on paper, you can also do it uh, online. It informs the way we do these things in the future. We tweak things every year, and we tweak it often, sometimes because we have some ideas, but more often because the feedback tells us that we need to change something. We've had some new elements this year. We had data papers. We wanted to explore the idea about what does it mean not just to write and publish a data paper, but to present one. We had the birds of a feather meetings. We did something different with the workshop scheduling. So tell us, what of the new things do you think we should keep? What things should we change? What things that we've been doing for years and years and years, should we actually stop doing that and, and, and change? Let us know uh, about these things. Don't hold back with your opinion. <coughs> and you know that mention of that stuff informs how we do it in future. Some of you may be asking, well, yeah, there is going to be an IDCC 16. I can't yet tell you where it's going to be. It will be about this time of year. We're about to announce an invitation uh, for a proposal, basically, for hosting uh, IDCC in future. That's one of the things we want to change. We've run the event uh, in the past in collaboration with others, as we did with the California Digital Library last year. It's often been done on a very informal basis. And we'd like to make that just a little more formal to make it clear to people that we welcome proposals to collaborate on hosting the event. Uh, in future, and to make clear what the expectations are on each of the parties, what we can bring to it, and what we hope other people can bring to it as well. So look out for that announcement if you're interested in hosting IDCC. I've already had one approach, even without the, the document there, so there's, there's going to be competition. Uh, and look out also for the announcement that will come shortly afterwards about where IDCC is going to be hosted in future. And it just remains again to say thank you to all of you. Uh, those of you who are staying on for the workshops, again, I really hope that uh, you enjoy that. Those who aren't staying on, enjoy London, if that's what you're going to do, or, or good travels back to all of you. Thanks again.